And what's happening? It's your boy. So in the 1990s, in the mid-1990s, I was living in the New York area. I was living in Greenwich, Connecticut. I had a, a studio. It's about 30 minutes north of the city. All of my clients, all of my day-to-day -day work as a designer was in New York. I had just recently been fired from Electra Records, uh, and I had a, I was running a studio, which basically m meant that I, I had a Mac and I had a small closet, and uh, I wasn't professionally satisfied with what I was doing at all. Uh, so what I did was, I put in a proposal to a small off, off, off Broadway. I guess it's off, off Broadway theater called here, the Independent Arts Center. At Spring Street in Houston, I think, uh, for a series of technologically mediated poetry readings. The piece that I'm about to show is a documentary of sorts that was released through Emigre magazine, I think in 1997, and it documents the performance, uh, some of my performance work, one specific performance, and a, and a bad uh, B-movie that I made um, that was at the front of um, at the front of the performance piece. So, so essentially, what we have here is we have about 15 minutes of a bad sci-fi film, followed transitioning into uh, a documentary of the performance work that I was doing, uh, largely at here and at the Wooster Group um, in uh, in Manhattan from the 90s. So, I hope you enjoy. Hello? Yo, B. What's up? I'm having some problems with the sequence. I think the nucleotides in the reference sample you gave me are bad. Either that or the routine's no good. No, I told you. You have to use the X-ray thermography routine to analyze the base sequence after the DNA fragments have been separated. I've been piloting that routine for six years now. And believe me, it's not the routine. Probably contaminated the bacteria phage. Hey, hey, hey. I gotta have your module on Tuesday. Look, if the phage gets onto this, we're both done. This is the Liz Williams show. The time is three o'clock. Just ahead, we'll find out more about Filipino stick fighting from Steven Seagal. But first, my guest this afternoon is the author and playwright, Cyrus Catfish. Mr. Catfish's new novel, Cabaret Voltaire, is an unflinching and fascinating examination of biotechnology and modern society on the ethical brink. It is a completely modern and yet truly gothic tale. Cyrus, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Could you tell our listeners what lies at the heart, at the core of this novel? Well, Liz, I can certainly take a stab at it. Cabaret Voltaire at first blush may in fact feel quite gothic. And yet obviously the terrain of this novel is not the windswept Scottish Highlands. Nor is this narrative propelled, driven forward by the usual grotesque monsters of man's creation. No, at its absolute core, Cabaret Voltaire is really about a kind of war. A war against a far more insidious foe. Dare I say a war for our collective soul. It's about the internal, interpersonal struggle taking place on a societal scale. And while this war is not fought on the blood-stained beaches of France nor in the poppy fields of Afghanistan, the stakes simply could not be higher. No, this war for the soul is waged on the evening news and on the cover of Rolling Stone and in the cut of the latest Prada pumps, even in the soft, peachy hues of your dress. Cincinnati, in that typical square-heeled Midwestern 
upper middle class Catholic ghetto. What else do you expect? You are a product of your environment. Your work lacks emotional depth. Elliot, wake up. Come on, wake up. I Jesus Ugh. Christ! What happened, man? What the fuck you tell you? One hand in the pocket! One hand in the pocket, man! Plan about things are good. How are you? You look a bit tired. I'm fine, really. No, no. What's wrong? Is everything okay with the dog? He's fine. Everyone's fine. It's nothing. He's waiting for you. Guys. What's wrong then? Really? I think it's this house. Ever since Ernst brought us here, I haven't slept well. You haven't slept well. Why? I toss and I turn. I've been having vivid dreams. Terrible dreams. Each involving a door, and the door is impossible to open. I know this is going to sound absurd. What? What's going to sound absurd? I think it has something to do with your work. I think these dreams have something to do with your work. Oh, yeah. What are, what are you talking about? I can't really explain. It's more of a pervasive feeling I wake with. I have a dire feeling that you're on the cusp, on the edge of something. Something that you have to be very careful with. Something that will cut to the core of your soul. And I'm not wrong about these things. I should be asking you, are you all right? Why, after all this time, are you coming to see me first? I just don't think I have the strength or even the will to go through with it. It's not fully tested. And I, I really don't think Billy has his end nailed down. I can't check his work. I'm a designer. Not a fucking biochemist. Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to stop swearing. Darlene's got me convinced it's a linguistic crutch, the last rhetorical refuge of the feeble-minded. Or was I? Anyway. Frankly, I haven't got a clue whether his module will work, or even can work. I've got some severe doubts about this. Listen, Elliot. I know you're a student of history, but I think you're underestimating the difficulty of those who came before you. Each generation has its own burden. You may be alone in your actions, but you're not alone in the quest. It's easy to paint the achievements of these men in flat tones. Don't reduce them to the natural man, to the primitive. You must understand the totality of their achievements, their responsibility. They all bore it. I, I refuse to believe uh, that this has anything to do with responsibility. I, I reject the idea that this has anything to do with responsibility. Would you agree that in each of them there's an ironclad certainty? It's as if they're an instrument of the work. It's society that places the horse before the cart. Fear is a dragon of the soul. It must be vanquished. You, too, must face the uncertainty of your work. You, too, must become an instrument of your work. You must relinquish control, or your fate is sealed. Elliot, 
the terrain has shifted. The task of the artist is never so simple. Now that I've completed it, I just don't think uh, I can go through with it. I don't think I have the strength or the will. I've got some severe doubts about this. I really do. How long have you been working on it? Five years. Look. Look at Herzfeld. Dr. Gomber, you've got to be kidding me. Isn't this a bit dramatic or, or, or at least a bit convenient? Each generation has its own burden. Grant me a slightly melodramatic turn. At the risk of resorting to cliches, we stand at the dawn of a new millennium. Now more than ever, it's important to look at the example of Herzfeld. In 1919, Herzfeld took the English name Hartfield in protest against German militarism and against the rise of Nazism in Germany. He engaged in a very public form of photo montage. Look. Look at it. Open your eyes, damn it. In the 20s, this was radical. No, no, this was more than radical. This was dangerous. This took courage, real courage. Hartsfeld was an instrument of the truth. I don't think he had any choice. This work called him. He didn't choose it. It chose him. Just as your work chose you. In 1933, stormtroopers invaded his apartment. He had to flee to Prague. You think that was easy? You think he enjoyed that? He risked everything, and you've risked nothing. Things just aren't that simple. Granted, Elliot, the great mass of men are sheep. No, they're not evil. No, they're not dumb. They're not below you. They're simply asleep. We all have our roles. Who will wake them from their slumber, if not the artist? Dr. Gombrich, I don't disagree with you. I never did. Our, our methods may just differ. After all, this isn't Zurich, and it's not 1919. And why are you here?
Why don't you join me? This way. After we enter the breathing apparatus, we'll have five minutes. I'll check his vitals and then jack him in. On my cue, and my cue only, Trigger the sequence. Look, man, pay the fuck attention in there. If the shit goes bad, it could get ugly. After he crashes the threshold, we're out. Follow my lead on the surgical gloves. Put them on exactly like this.
I hope his genomic analysis was correct. I've inserted the microflake into the thermal cycle of the device to begin separation. The human genome contains 3,164.7 million chemical nucleotide bases. 2% of the genome encodes instructions for the synthesis of proteins. Repetitive sequences are thought to have no direct function. Billy's module does not adhere to this paradigm. Utilizing comparative genomics, Billy prospects this junk DNA in an attempt to provide the mother module with a critical protein key. He'll begin metabolizing the enzymes on my count. He'll begin metabolizing the enzymes on my count. Establish communication. Hey man, hey man, eye contact. Maintain eye contact. I need him to remain calm. We'll know that the threshold sequence was successfully initiated if both exhaust ports release nitrogen. Metabolization complete. Five, four, three, two, one. The next 60 seconds are critical. If we go south, drop everything and shut it down. He's crossing the threshold. He's crossing the threshold. He's crossing the threshold. We're out, we're out. Damn. I was so close. I couldn't taste it. I breathed it. Most nights I still just lie there in bed, rolling it over and over in my mind. My whole life feels that way, like a silent black January night, hours before God's snowy white blanket covers the earth with his downy purity. I think about those things I did right. Oh, I think about those things I did wrong. Fear. Fear is the thing that makes small men of us all. Keeps us bound. Oh, I found my courage. Yeah. I found my courage Like those great beasts of the Serengeti Like those slingshot lions Il n'y a que moi qui puisse lutter comme un loup harponné Poisson de la rivière Ohio qui pleure
hold young back hopes to my breast. I drop Titanic tears from my eyes. I found sadness and polarizing Fish for catfishes and sleep sound in briar pouches. Tell them about the crows, boy! Well, they paid me. Yeah, they, they made me bring more crows. These black birds left me. I would not, nor would I. No, I could not. I said, wait, dodo man. Leave me. Last night I had lunch with the king of the jungle. King of the jungle. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Grapefruit antelope. Grapefruit antelope. Porcupine pig's feet. Porcupine pig's feet. We chewed a meat, we chewed a meat. Oh, let's just say we let you the fat, we chewed the fat. These three toothless. And useless monsters sit furry and spent at my table. Slack jawed beasts. Trois monstres sans dents et sans utilité sont assis sur la table. They ape at me. And still, I show no fear. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an absolutely wonderful opportunity for the only topper of this evening. We have a deal that is by far, by far, the best, and I do mean the best. Package of music, spoken word poetry, and posters I've ever seen in my five years on the network. First, we got the Apollo program, Haynes VPT, all cotton t shirt. Second, we got the Athletes Online from the head TV package. This is a beautiful offer! It's amazing! And third, we got the Throwing Apples and Sun head TV package. Let's get started! The Athlete Shall Add and Head CD package contains five counts. That's five. That's five. Two color posters printed one side. We got one, two, three, four, and five. They are beautiful posters! Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is some high quality, sexually titillating, intellectually stimulating, gut wrenchingly beautiful work. I mean, have you seen work of this quality in my time on the network? I, I, I'm emotional about it, ladies, because this is some beautiful stuff. Let me be candid with you ladies. Last night, I had a wonderful, sweet little thing over my apartment. 
we had a bottle of a little Moet Chandon. And, uh, you know, we had to lie it down low. How you doing there? Now, let me see. You gonna come on there now, little sugar? Come on now. Come on, little sugar. Now, let's get, let's, let's see you and I just... Let's just get it drink now. What do you say? We'll go get... You know, we'll have a little beer or something. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, Missy. Come on. Come, come on now. Open the door now. <laughs> Get the hell out the car. I'm gonna beat down and look around the car right now. We had a bottle of a little Moet Chandon, and uh, you know, we had to lie it down low. And I was looking for a CD to put on, I was looking for some music to put on. And you know, as I mentioned before, my tastes run towards the suburban hip hop. So I placed a little bit of that music on the turntable. Some of them joints from, uh, you know, from that police lines package. And let me tell you ladies, we're just getting it on. You know what I'm saying? We're getting it on. Anyway, my point is, these are 30 minutes of the most amazing, most pimping, bumping, snapping, pimp hopping, hip hopping music I've ever heard in my entire life. You're gonna love it. Don't make me climb in there now. You know I will. You know I'll come in there, baby. Don't make me pop. And he opened the door. Time to go. Straight along and miss, 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 are you aware of the quality of the typographic specimens that are contained in this package? I don't think so! I don't think so! Take a look! We got Jigsaw Hexafluoride, Jigsaw Xylene. We got the Venus Dioxide family, Venus Dioxide outline. We got the Typhoid Mary family, the Typhoid Mary 3D, Typhoid Mary outline, and Typhoid Mary 3D plug, sure. Have you seen type like that? I don't think so! I don't think so!
must see paradise. I have a dream, I have a dream. I heard the lonely man scream as he reached the top. from a daisy. <laughs> Nate was a five-time loser and a scoundrel. Born in the pine tar waters of the Ohio River, he bore no genuine love for Delia. He was a man ruled by envy. Did you know I'm a baby? Did you know I'm a girl? But you know I can't drive this shotgun Cause I call you messing around with the girl You should know I love you You should know I'm making me a girl but with this black barrel shotgun, I'm gonna shoot you like a coach in a squirt. God damn, kid, that cat was on me. God damn, kid, that cat was on me. You feel them beasts mad for like ages and shit, dig? I had to run all stupid through his domain. I was certain I could outrun him. Look at my feet, they're big. When I was 10, we'd throw rocks and shit at the side of the neighbor's house. Man, I could fly. That old bastard didn't have a chance of catching me. But this fool's got some big ass teeth like fangs and shit. 
Nate cultivated quite an unhealthy fixation with feet. He told Delia that the Japanese were the most highly evolved society on earth, what with their fastidious grooming habits, neatly trimmed toenails, and elaborate methods of foot binding and whatnot. Nate even took to fashioning a set of finger picks Hello? from toenail clippings. Nate? He was convinced it was the toenail. Nate? Yeah. Just Nate? It sure is. Yeah, uh, we gotta talk, kid. And the toenail alone that could unlock the Look, sweet, rambling rhythm of the banjo. No, 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 no. Listen, man, it's not that simple. There's no done with that shit. No, no, no. Look, Cletus, man, I'm sorry for all that shit, all that shit that happened in Vietnam, but I can't have nothing to do with this no more. Nate, no, no, there's no out. There's no out. Nate, there's no out. I'm gonna roll up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll up and uh, we'll see if we can't work this shit out. Nate, who was that on the phone? Cletus. Cletus, man, what are you talking to Cletus for? Ever since I got out of the joint, that guy just won't leave me the hell alone. Hey, man, when you and now he the said he's coming over. Oh, I know. Man. Needless to say, the lion's share of the time Nate spent in the joint, he was locked down and solitary. But on those rare days, he got time in the yard. Fuck, man, here comes Cletus. Nate would get his swole on. He'd pump iron like a man. Now on the yard, Nate didn't want to catch a shank or get beat down with a pillowcase stuffed with oranges. So in a symbolic preemptive strike, Nate covered his nipples with electrical tape in the form of an X. Initially, Nate contemplated tearing them off with a pair of pliers. But in the joint, you can't get access to no pliers. <laughs> Yeah, me too, Cletus. Yeah, mate, I sure am glad we got that work out. Finally. Hmm. <laughs> that sure is... That sure is fine. <laughs> That's smooth. That's smooth. All right, well, I'm going to be on my way. Come back now, Nate. I mean, Cletus. I think I must have been 25 when I first noticed the sleep. The sleep I speak of is the one recurrent, particularly saturated series of images. I'm looking for Henry Miller. I think he's stolen my life. It's my life he's leading. Stumbling around in the French French And eating roots with the natives. Those routines are my roots, my family roots. He devours them with gusto, with a verve and a nerve that excludes me from the action. After searching high and low for him, I spy him engaged in the usual drunken debauchery and call him out. 
Hey, hang on, hey, gosh, shout. Put down the orchestra of Herodotus Bosch and let's fight to the death like caged animals with your command of the native tongue, linguistic dexterity, and your prose so generously peppered with obscenities. You should trounce me like an old lady. That's some kind of funny life you're leading. I wonder who you stole it from. In this dream, in this dream, Henry responds. Only if you can answer these simple questions will I grant your wish and beat you to within an inch of your life. Must we be like Alec Baldwin and Billy? Is it important to eat exotic, earthy, and uncooked tubers with the Sherpas at 15,000 feet? Is the Catholic Kingdom the seat of moral bankruptcy? Or is it heaven on earth? Are you a failure? Have you never to discuss your latest effort with Noah on NPR? Is it important to go slot canyon here with the boys for PBS? And at last, he poses his most powerful and yet most cliche question of all. What? What is the only truth movie? A man can make. I stare at Henry. I feel betrayed by my subconscious. After all, what would it say about me if I failed to answer these questions, disregarded our agreement, and went ahead and kicked Henry Miller's ass out of principle. It's usually at this point, as I stand there confused, that Henry recedes into the antiseptic fog of memory, and a chorus of heavenly angels begins to sing glamorous life. Wasn't it Sheila E? Wasn't it Sheila E, that drummer woman who danced with Prince with such reckless abandon? Aren't her words the fountainhead of all our problems? Oh, to lead a glamorous life. These words hold sway over us like the narcotic pulse of the Afro-Cuban rhythm of which she is master. She is indeed both the Tigris and Euphrates. Oh, to lead a glamorous life. I fight this desire. I said, I fight this desire as one fights, as one fights the, the onset of sleep.
press the button. Okay, here we go. Have a good night. Thank you. The number is area code 203967311. I repeat, the number Thank <laughs> you. 